What's going on, everyone? So we got news last night. The Los Angeles Lakers are front runners to sign Christian Coloco. Uh, he missed all of last season due to blood clots, uh, but he is expected to be cleared and uh, is working to finalize uh, his return to the NBA. Uh, there are several other teams, including the Spurs, the Clippers, uh, and a few others, uh, Heat, that are interested in bringing him on. My guess is that he's going to go to the place that gives him the best opportunity, that gives him maybe even an opportunity to play, you know, consistent minutes. Now, there is a real risk with him, right? He already was a project big coming in the league, right? He was good in, in college, Arizona, but he was a guy that, you know, he showed promise, block shots, rebound, true seven-footer, right? Be a floor running big, could be versatile, but... Guy that you're you're working on, you know, two, three, maybe four years, uh, and then now he's making that move and in the starting lineup. Now you never know. Guys kind of you know expedite their uh, growth uh, at different rates, but you know you, the patience is is where the key is. Uh, and him being 24 years old, missing a season, see a guy that's going to be able to come in immediately and make an impact. It's the question, right? How much was he able to really work out? How much was he actually able to do during this year hiatus while he's recovering and kind of trying to get his medical condition resolved? Um, but hopefully he's a guy that can come in and just limited minutes. I think anywhere he goes, right? It, no one's going to be asking him to play 30, 40 minutes a game, right? The, people understand what he is, but I just don't want people to expect him to come in, be this big impact player. To me, he would be a guy that solves a need right now because we're thin in the front court. Now, obviously, I would still go get a Valanchunas or something if you can do it, but he's a guy that helps right now uh, and could potentially be your even starting center uh, in the future. However, Lakers cannot sign him. Lakers are over the amount of players that you're allowed, over 15, uh, and their two ways are full. Right, they could bring him to a training camp deal and then maybe sign him to the G League, or do they end up getting rid of Colin Castleton? Right, like maybe this kind of feels like if you're willing to bring him in and potentially waive somebody, then clearly you don't believe that Colin Castleton's ready to come in and make an immediate impact. If he's not, I mean, he's the same age as Coloco, right? Like, so if you're higher on him than you are. Castleton, then get rid of Castleton and bring in Coloco, right? Like, it just, either Castleton's ready or he's not. If he's not ready, again, like, what are you going to do? You're going to continue to develop him for three, four years, and now he's, what, 27, 28, right? It's just like, at some point, you got to throw these guys to the fire. So the, the problem is, is like, who do the Lakers get rid of to bring in Coloco? Because again, I don't see him being like, yeah, let me sign a training camp deal when a team like the Spurs or somebody might just sign him outright, right? Maybe one of these other teams just sign him outright. So is he really going to go, oh yeah, I'll take a training camp deal and then go play in the G League when he could potentially actually be on an actual NBA roster? I don't really see that be the case. Now, the Lakers, maybe they work out a trade. Right, they could end up trading somebody, um, you know, a reddish, uh, a Christian Wood, a Jackson Hayes to go and get uh, a guy um, like Coloco. Uh, maybe they end up doing the Jeremy Grant deal or something like that. Now you have this open roster spot that you can just bring him in. But if you're not getting rid of Colin Castleton, because I don't want to get rid of Blake Henson, and you're definitely not getting rid of Armel Traore. Like, he might end up being the best young guy we have. His size, his versatility, just what we've seen from him. I mean, that dude could be something, right? Keep him. Uh, Blake Henson is a guy that, I mean, you could make an argument he should be on the roster this season. He has the size and the shooting and things that we need immediately. But I do think that he's a, a player that um, can have an impact uh, as soon as next season, right? Especially depending on what the Lakers do and, you know, you got to kind of fill some, fill some gaps and some holes, right? Blake Henson's a guy that come in. Now, if you're doing a, a salary dump trade, is Coloco worth a second or two seconds? If that's the case, why didn't you just do it for Valanchunas? Why didn't you just do it for one of these other guys? It just, it doesn't add up to me. Now, you could argue the Lakers are desperate now, right? Because Christian Wood's going to miss 
at least the first month of the season, maybe even more. Remember, he's only being reevaluated in eight weeks, right? So he could end up missing two, three months of the season. So maybe the Lakers are looking at it as like, yeah, well, then it was like, oh, we got Christian Wood, we got Jackson Hayes, where now it's like that. But Jackson, Jackson Hayes is similar player, more experience, I think would have a better impact now and is young enough to still be your development guy. So if you're going to go and unload Jackson Hayes to bring in Coloco, like that doesn't really make sense to me. So are you getting rid of Christian Wood? Do you end up trading a second in Christian Wood to, to be able to sign Coloco? Like, sure, but Christian Wood is, in my opinion, the best out of Hayes and uh, Cam Reddish. So are you waving Cam Reddish? Right, or not waving, you can't wave cameras, but are you trading Cam Reddish? Right? Maybe, but then you need to pray and hope that Jackson Hay or uh, uh, Jared Vanderbilt is good to go, right? Because he's our best sizable defensive piece, right? I think Max Christie, I think you could make a genuine argument. It might be our second best on ball defender, but he doesn't have the size and the length that Cam Reddish has, right? Now you could argue, well, you have Dalton connect. You could always just slide Cam Reddish to the three or uh, uh, Max Christie to the three. Um, you know, you could always slide LeBron to the three. You got Rui who could start. So you could argue maybe, right? Like just get rid of Cam Reddish. I think he is the most likely to be traded and kind of salary dumped if you're going to bring in Coloco. But again, it's just like, okay, you still need a Valanchunez or, you know, a Walker Kessler or whomever. Unless you're making a trade to go get a Jeremy Grant or, you know, a Cam Johnson, or there's there's reports going around that they're that they've had discussions with Atlanta for for DeAndre Hunter, right? Maybe you are bringing in Hunter. And then now you're freeing up a roster spot and bringing in Coloco, right? But if you end up trading, say, a Gabe Vincent, and that, say you trade D'Lo and Gabe Vincent for Hunter, right? Or even if you did it like a Rui and, what, a Gabe Vincent for Hunter or something like that, right? Like, you'd still, now you have a need, so you might as well bring in Jordan Goodwin. Like, yeah, you solved your Wayne issue, but it's just, again, it's just like, where do you, how do you make this work, right? My guess if they really do sign Coloco, it'll be they end up salary dumping Cam Reddish and getting him off the books and then bringing him in because I think that they'll keep Christian Wood because Christian Wood's versatility is just it's too valuable and his his upside potential when healthy. We talk about a guy that seventeen and seven, right? That could plug in, play the four, play the five, especially if you eventually trade Rui Hachimura. Christian Wood might make even more sense, right? You might need him to be your backup. Like, let's say you do go get a Hunter, right? Or Jeremy Grant or whomever, right? It would make sense at that point that, like, because Rui's probably going in either of those deals, that Christian Wood now becomes more valuable because now you have him as LeBron's immediate backup. And at times you could even run, you know, Wood at the four with AD and, and LeBron James. Also, you have Anthony Davis, who has basically made it known again that like, hey, I don't want to play the center full time. Now, he's not saying I don't ever want to play the center. He's not saying I won't start at the center or close at the center. He's just saying I don't want to play, you know, 35, 40 minutes a game at the center spot, right? Play 20 minutes and let me play another 15 at the four, right? So bringing in, say, a Jackson Hayes, not just that, but you're going to have nights where Anthony Davis is going to get the night off. I mean, he's been incredibly healthy the last, like, year and a half, two years, which is great. Hopefully that continues. But even then, he's still going to miss, you know, probably 10 games at least, right, just through rest and stuff like that. So, you know, now at that point, you're having Jackson Hayes kind of come in. I just, I don't think it makes any sense to get rid of Hayes or Wood for Coloco. Because Coloco, like, if he was a guy that you knew could come in and make an impact immediately, then sure, right? Get rid of him, right? But we don't. There's so many question marks about Coloco, and, it, like, he could be terrible. He could be not ready to play. He might need to spend a year in the G League, right? Or spend a year kind of just, you know, on limited minutes kind of getting some burn. Now, the Lakers might look at it as like, hey, we, you know, we just need – a seven footer regardless. But at that point, you might as well just stand pat and then go do the Valanchunas trade, right? And go bring in a Valanchunas or, you know, be patient and see if one of these centers become available or you know, go 
get a Clint Capella or something. At least he's an expiring contract, so you know you can get off of his money. And if it works, you can sign him. You know, a, a Valanciunas style deal where you know, maybe it's three years, thirty million or something, right? Like, I just I, I don't like. I'm all for Coloco. I've wanted the Lakers, you know, last few seasons, there was talks, you know, about Gary Trent Jr. and the Lakers potentially trading for Gary Trent Jr. and some of the guys on the Raptors. And I even talked about, like, if you could get a Coloco added to that, right, if you could bring him in in some capacity, um, why not? Why not bring a guy like that in and see what he could give you, see what he could do um, as a development big? Because that's the key. He's a development big. He's not a ready-to-plug-and-play starting type center or, you know, your immediate backup right now. He's just not that. And he just missed a whole year, right? Glad he's back. I'm glad he's healthy. I love him on the Lakers, but we also have to be realistic at, like, you know, where he's at, right? He's probably best spinning a season in the G League. So my guess is, again, it's either Cam Reddish that they end up getting off of and then bringing him in, or it ends up being... um, you know, uh, uh, Colin Castleton and they sign him to a two-way. But it's just like, again, like, why are you bringing in Coloco when you have Castleton? So if you don't think Castleton's ready, get rid of him, right? But anyway, as always, this is a discussion and I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? What are your thoughts? Um, who do you think they'll end up getting rid of to bring in Coloco? Do you think it won't be anybody? Do you think it will be somebody? Again, however you feel, whatever your thoughts are, I'd love to hear it. So let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. So me enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. Now subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.